five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hi there, I'm Neve. I am a scientist and I'm absolutely obsessed about space. It's cool. I'm so lucky that I have a telescope, I know. But for the month of February, even if you just look up in the sky, if you get up early, one hour before sunrise, you'll be able to see Saturn, Jupiter and Mars in the night sky. Just look to the east, that's all you have to do and you'll see them there. Because the night sky isn't just made up of stars, which is like our sun. The night sky is made up of planets and sometimes asteroids, sometimes meteor showers. Planets I love looking at and the moon, obviously. A planet has a constant light, whereas stars tend to twinkle and that's how you know the difference. And some of them are a distinctive color. Mars is always kind of reddish. So that's how you know when you're looking at Mars in the night sky. We're fascinated with Mars, aren't we? It's kind of, it's our nearest planet. That's why, you know, it's sort of the same size as us. People believe that Mars was once a planet very similar to us, but it's our neighbor. And it was once felt that there was life on Mars. And that's what kind of drives us, isn't it? So there are lots of countries now heading to Mars with different missions. And this month, there is a ton of them arriving to Mars. Well, I exaggerate, it's not a ton. There's three, but that's loads. One is an orbiting mission from the United Arab Emirates, the HOPE mission. The second one is a Chinese mission, which is landing its first rover on Mars, Tianwen-1, that's called. And then the third one, the one that we've all been waiting for, is a massive NASA mission, Mars 2020, which is landing its rover, Perseverance, and a new helicopter, Ingenuity. First one's February the 8th, second one's February the 9th, and the third one is February the 18th. What a packed February we have ahead of us. The first one from the United Arab Emirates has their very first spacecraft heading to Mars, the HOPE mission. And that's going to spend one Mars year orbiting around Mars, getting information about its atmosphere. So we'll get lots of data from that. And then China's in the game too. China is sending its first rover, Tianwen-1, to Mars. And their rover is going to spend a year in a crater called Utopia Planitia. And they're going to be monitoring the soil and they're going to be checking out some of the water ice deposits in that section. They're going to be there for approximately 60 sols or 60 days. And the orbiter, which is in conjunction with the mission, will be there for about a year. And then the NASA Perseverance rover. We've been waiting a long time for the Perseverance rover. Of course, we have the Curiosity rover there at the moment, which is always sending us back information. But the Perseverance one is the one we've all been waiting for. It's packed with cameras, and they're going to be looking for signs of life. They're going to be looking for signatures of ancient microbial life. And when you say microbial, we mean teeny, 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 tiny particles, probably millions of them that could live under your nail. But they're going to look at soil samples, they're going to look at rock samples, they're going to collect rock samples, and they're going to dispatch them back to Earth on a subsequent mission that will be arriving there in about three or four years' time. And then the other big part of the mission is the helicopter, or kind of like a drone, called Ingenuity. And this is basically like a demonstration for the technology. Because the Mars atmosphere is thinner than Earth. So if you were to fly like a regular plane or a regular helicopter or a regular drone on Mars, mm, may not work, may not work. You have to possibly have bigger rudders or, or bigger blades. Maybe you have to go faster. And so it's a test. And if it's possible, it'll be brilliant because now we'll be able to fly over the surface of Mars if they get this to work. Another way for us to take pictures rather than waiting for a rover to climb miles and miles or kilometers and kilometers over years, sending back pictures that we've had so far from the Curiosity rover. <sighs> so there's a lot in that, isn't there? I mean, it's so exciting. And why, coincidentally, is all of this happening in the month of February? Well, it's happening because all the launches happened around about seven months ago. And that's no coincidence. It's about how Earth and Mars were lining up around July 2020. Sometimes they're close together and sometimes they're very far apart. Like Earth could be on one side of the sun and Mars could be on the other. So the distance between Earth and Mars varies over 26 months. So last July, 
they were very close together. So when that happens, that's a really good time to launch spacecraft because it's going to take seven months for a spacecraft to get there as opposed to two years. And it's safer because if you can get them there quicker, the better chance they have of surviving and the quicker we'll get results. So that's why we decided to launch so many things to Mars last July. And that happens every 15 or 20 years. The next time it happens is in 2035. So imagine there'll be lots of missions happening then. Yes, that's when they're planning to put humans to Mars as well. No coincidence. I tell you, these scientists and engineers are very brainy the way they can predict where all these planets are orbiting. So February is a really exciting month, isn't it? With three missions arriving at Mars finally. And I said, 2035 will be another big deluge of missions and hopefully our first human mission to Mars. 2035, 15 years time. Hmm, where will you be then? What age will you be? Maybe you'll be on Mars and maybe I'll be there with you too. Thank <laughs> you.